Star Citizen's 3.20 patch is now live and it's a bit messy. There's some cool stuff in this patch, but it might be a little bit before you get to experience it due to the wave of new bugs and server stability issues. That said, I did manage to get some time in while things were working and I've got some hot takes. Now the first thing I wanted to check out when loading in was the new Microtech Forest Density. A while back, Microtech had much denser, more realistic looking forests, but they were kind of scaled back, I assume for performance reasons at one point. Now those dense forests appear to be back and they look quite nice. The game still has some bad pop-in issues when flying around, but the density of the vegetation looks quite good and it gives me a lot of hope that they might be able to do some really cool full jungle planets like Kashyyyk from Star Wars or Pandora from Avatar. This will also probably be a significant factor for the updated Jump Town missions that are coming where one of them is going to take place on Microtech in a forested area. It's going to provide a lot more cover, a lot more opportunities for potentially infantry to fight back against prowling ships overhead. Now before we get to the next point, I'm getting kind of hungry. Luckily today's sponsor can help with that problem. I don't know about you guys, but my life seems to keep getting busier and busier, which means I can't spend as much time cooking healthy meals for myself or my family. Luckily, now I don't have to with Factors, never frozen calorie conscious meals that are shipped right to my door. All I have to do is pop Factor meals in the microwave. They're ready to serve in two minutes. They taste fantastic. They're well portioned and I never have to worry about finding ingredients or even cleanup time. Also, my kids love them, which honestly is the true test of whether or not something tastes good. Factor has over 34 weekly options for me to choose from that are all healthy and packed with flavor. They can even cover a wide variety of dietary needs like keto, vegetarian, calorie smart, which I definitely appreciate. Plus, they let you try the service with a massive discount on your first order. So try Factor today. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code LEVELCAP50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com or click the link below and use code LEVELCAP50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Now the next update I was excited to test out was the improved wheeled vehicle physics. Basically CIG has been doing a bunch of work to try and make vehicles feel heavier, not flip over as easy, feel just generally more realistic. And I don't know if they typed in the wrong number right before compiling this patch or something, but uh, it's got some issues. I really wanted to make this work because this is one of those avenues of gameplay that I feel could be amazing once they dial it in where you have missions that you need to get to by driving long distances, but I could barely get the any vehicle really out of the, the hangar bay here, the main vehicle spawn garage, without flipping it. I mean, <laughs> look at this here! It's insane! Someone on Twitter said it might have something to do with wearing a backpack while in a vehicle or something like that. Maybe there are some good physics behind this, but even this I noticed that as soon as I let go of acceleration, the car like slams on its brakes. I mean, the amount of chassis sway on this vehicle is truly insane. It, it really wants to just flip itself. My final test was to take the STV out to a big grassy field and just drive it around and it was kind of a disaster. Every rock I slammed into almost flipped the vehicle. And while you could say that would be somewhat realistic for off-roading physics IRL, uh, if CIG wants players to be able to navigate this world in anything of, other than a hover bike, they're gonna really need to fine tune some of these collision mechanics and give players a bit of leeway when it comes to just hitting rocks, small rocks, for example. Next, I had to test out the new Mirai Fury LX. Uh, I actually think the 3.20 patch is probably one of the better patches for racing so far. So if racing is your main thing, this is probably one of the biggest patches you've seen in a long time. The Fury LX is a cool looking ship. It doesn't have weapons on it, which is, you know, a little bit of a bummer, but it is a pure racing craft. It's got incredible visibility and the maneuverability is extremely fun. I kind of wish most ships in the game flew like this and then you could just take something like the Fury and give it even more mobility or something, but it is just a pleasure to fly. I think the racing community is really gravitating towards this ship as well. And just what I like about it so much is it really does all the best things about Star Citizen's flight model, which is giving you tons of side thruster maneuverability. So you just feel like you have so much control over this ship 
honestly i wouldn't mind seeing this level of control in more ships and then like the fury just becoming the better version of that but it is so fun to fly this ship and it made me really wish that more ships had these types of maneuvering capabilities now the next thing i wanted to test out are the new ai enemy ships that you can run into on bounty missions and other missions involving space combat first i had to run a few bounty missions to unlock uh my uh, bounty tiers again it's kind of annoying whenever they drop a patch you have to run the like introductory mission to it and then it unlocks the rest of your rep that is saved to your account so i had to run these missions and uh, i took the links out to run a bunker bounty mission and uh flipped it almost crashed it like 10 times on the way there thanks to the awesome new driving physics but uh, we made it there and I noticed something else that was really cool that I had seen other players talk about and it was mentioned in the patch notes but I always hand wave any sort of AI patch notes because the AI almost always seems completely non-responsive unreactive in most situations but this time the AI were different they seemed much more reactive much more intelligent, pushing my position. I don't know if this is part of the new patch or if it's because I was on a, a new server that was just giving me a lot of AI overhead and that's why they were responding, but I actually ended up dying on this AI mission because I only brought enough ammo to kill a few guys and it basically screwed me over because I thought I was going to be able to just loot some weapons, but they pushed me really hard and I kind of fumbled around not having my medical gear set up properly and... There we go. AI comes in, takes me down. I was quite impressed by this, to be honest. So I did run another mission after this to sort of test it out. And the AI, again, were much more responsive. I took it way more cautiously. I was actually somewhat afraid of them this time. And that's a very good upgrade. I hope that this isn't just because of having extra server overhead. And I hope this is sort of a, a new backend system where AI are going to consistently respond much quicker and much more realistically. I had also read on Reddit that uh, they saw AI picking up weapons off the ground. And one had even picked up a grenade launcher from a previous player and was able to use it in combat. So that sounds very cool. Uh, this is something that needs a lot more testing to sort of suss out just how deep it goes, but um, I was impressed to say the least. The guns also sound a bit different and have different recoil, although in this play session the audio completely bugged out, which is something that other players have been telling me about, uh, which is not good. It's one of the many bugs that 3.20 brought to the game. It almost feels like they brought a lot more bugs than they fixed with this patch, so we'll see what happens on that front. But if your weapons are kicking more or sounding a bit different, it's because they have gone through a significant overhaul. Also, in case you're wondering, the restricted area flight zones over Lorville are still pretty extreme. This right here is a restricted area. I was getting some beauty shots and all of a sudden, bam, my ship disappears and I end up as a headless dude on the ground outside of Lorville because... That's what impounding a ship does. Uh, the amount of bugs in this game right now are pretty crazy. I could easily fill up a lengthy video with the amount of bugs I ran into just trying to test this patch. It was extreme. Many of the ships weren't working properly. Many of the missions weren't spawning properly. Uh, many of the features, like loading the whole sea with cargo, wasn't working properly. So. It's not in a good state right now. I don't recommend jumping into 3.20 at the moment unless you really do want to just be an alpha tester and report on bugs. Nonetheless, I soldiered on with my mission to find some of the new AI ships and I found an 890 jump mission. I knew there was going to be some ships outside of that. And I engaged and sure enough, we found a ship that I've never fought before in the universe, the Prowler. This is based on an alien ship from the Tavaran Wars. It's a Tavaran dropship. It's super cool looking. It makes a great bad guy ship. And it was awesome just to run into this randomly because normally I would have been fighting like Cutlass Blacks or something on this mission, which I fought a thousand times before. And now that we have a much bigger enemy ship pool to pull from for each mission, I can see a lot of variety and fun coming from this. Obviously, the enemy AI probably needs a bit of work in terms of becoming more challenging or offering more challenging missions and stuff, but 
Uh, it is neat to fight this thing. I totally forgot it had a tail gun turret and I'm curious to see what other kinds of ships that I run into. Next up, I wanted to test out Arena Commander because that is one of the main focuses of this patch, a complete new front end for Arena Commander for matchmaking and new maps, new modes. Uh, this is the new map that takes place over a planet. It's the first planet battle you can have in Arena Commander, which is cool. I loaded up Pirate Swarm, but was pretty quickly disappointed by just how poorly this map was set up for the out of bounds limit. Uh, all the enemy ships spawn way out of bounds and often don't attack you immediately or your AI companions will attack them out of bounds and you have to like sit in bounds watching them. It's really poorly set up and it just reeks of not having enough time to really stress test this content. And that's kind of the underlying theme with patch 3.20. Another decision that CIG made with Arena Commander, which I don't agree with, is doing timed content events. So master modes, which I was really excited about that is going to let players test the new flight models in master mode is a timed event as opposed to something that you can just access all the time. And while I do think there are some benefits to doing timed game mode events in other games, it's a good way of getting players all into an event for a little while, testing it out and then burning out and moving on to the next thing. Uh, I don't think Star Citizen is quite set up for doing these types of timed events in Arena Commander. We'll see what happens, but I'm pretty disappointed that I can't just jump in and test out master modes. Putting that behind a timed event seems really stupid because they need feedback on master modes. You don't want to just get feedback from one limited time event. You want players testing it out constantly, trying it out with friends and giving CIG feedback whenever possible. Next up, I dropped into some racing in Arena Commander. This is probably one of the better features of this patch and it's gonna be great for people who like racing. I don't know a ton of people who are super into racing, but there is a small community around it. And now you can actually get into a racetrack and practice without being super punished by dying in the persistent universe. So maybe more players will get into racing after this patch. That said, spaceship racing in Star Citizen is very challenging even with some of the new markers on the tracks. I feel like it could benefit from some of the things that traditional racing games have, like uh, a colored line that shows you both where to go and if you're going too fast. Those can be some really nice aids when learning other racing games. And since this is significantly more challenging than other racing games, it could definitely use a little bit more aids uh, to get some uh, maybe skeptical players on board. And I would count myself in that category. Now, I really did want to test out some cargo trade with the whole C because this is the other new spaceship in this patch. Unfortunately, the game kind of bugged out when trying to load the whole C. Uh, I flew into the square, unspooled or opened the spools for the ship, and then it just never really loaded for me. So I'm not sure if it was bugging out, if it was a back-end server thing, if I clicked the wrong thing, but I'll definitely be testing it out once I feel like the servers are in a better state to see if any of these trade routes are profitable and more importantly, actually fun. Now there's definitely a lot more stuff to check out with this patch aside from all the different arena commander modes. There's new illegal salvage missions and stuff like that that do look interesting. It's a new type of mission where you have time limits to do stuff or you get in trouble with the law. So that sounds kind of cool. One of the best quality of life updates with the 3.20 patch is the quantum jumping UI just working as intended. Whereas before you had all these kind of weird off center issues with it, they actually updated it. And that's just such a huge deal. I can't imagine the amount of players that stopped playing Star Citizen because they couldn't figure out how to quantum jump somewhere because of the broken and buggy UI. So that's a huge deal right there. I think there's a lot of other stealth patch updates. A lot of the patch notes simply didn't mention some of the cooler or more important stuff in there. So I imagine we're going to discover a lot of other little things as the servers become more and more stable. But anyway, that's my overview so far of testing this patch as much as possible given the current state of the servers. What do you guys think? Is the 3.20 patch something that really excites you or is it a bunch of features that maybe aren't exactly in your wheelhouse? Are you much more excited about some of the upcoming stuff like the persistent hangar updates? And if you want to watch a video about that, check out this video here. CIG recently detailed some really important updates coming with the cargo elevators, new hangar systems, new cargo systems that are going to fundamentally change many things about the way 
way that you play. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.